Today we're going to be discussing uh, tips and the characteristics of the VXT programmable water feeder made by the Hydrolevel Company of New Haven, Connecticut. It comes in two basic varieties. You've got your uh, 24 volt unit and you've got your 120 volt unit. And you want to make sure that uh, you have the proper unit uh, for the uh, appropriate voltage of your boiler. In general, 24 volt units are found with uh, atmospheric natural gas or, or propane type um, steam boilers. And the 120 volts are found with either your power gas or your um, old fashioned uh, oil fired boilers. The um, hookups here with this um, valve or uh, we're going we're to discuss probably in another video. Today we're mainly going to be concerned with the electronics. So if you happen to get or you're confused about whether this is the uh, correct unit or not or can tell the difference, uh, this is the, what you want to look for. Of course, the cover says 120 volts and the 424 volts. But inside is where you're going to have your um, differences, of course. With your 120 volt unit, you're going to have a uh, transformer. And your 24 volt unit, you're going to have these two resistors here in place. These are 150 um, ohm resistors, about one watt, and they uh, they drop the current. These guys get a little bit warm, uh, so you be careful not to touch them. Um, and the other difference is the, um, the solenoid coil. When this is energized, you got 120 volts here, and it goes into uh, this coil, which is, see if I can read, 120 volts, and it's coated green, and 24 volts goes into here, and it's um, coated uh, uh, blue. We may be going to be paying attention to the uh, 24 volt unit because it's a little uh, easier to set up. So you have three uh, screw terminals here, um, generally able to hot, feed, and neutral. And you want to uh, run your hot 24 volt lead here. Um, if you have a polarized system, you want to run your uh, grounded lead here. And what's going to happen when you light this up, when you, when you energize this, this unit, brand new out of the box, what you're going to see is the number zero, then the number zero, and the number two. And then for about a second, this period is going to light up before it goes out. And I'll see that again. And you'll see Now, in order to reset the uh, the number that you see, you can press the uh, display reset button down here. And that gets rid of the number. The number is non-volatile in that once the uh, number is um, encoded in the chip here, this uh, processor chip, uh, it will stay until the button is, is reset or the chip is burned up. Uh, let's uh, see if we can trigger this device. Now the way you can set it up is by use of these uh, dip switches. You have delay and you can set your delay anywhere from 30 seconds all the way up to um, 10 minutes. And then you can set your feed what is fed after that delay either to stop feeding once it hits the low water cutoff level or one gallon all the way up to five gallons. Now what it really does is once it's energized, once you uh, send the trigger energy to here to this uh, feed terminal, it will time out 30 seconds and then we'll stay open for a certain period of time. So let's see, uh, let's see that work. 
And we'll do that by simply jumpering the hot lead and uh, there. And you see now that there is a period after the zero. And what that period means is that this uh, guy here, this uh, microprocessor chip, is getting the signal that uh, from the low water cutoff that it, the boiler needs water. If you set your delay here for 30 seconds, it should time out approximately 30 seconds. There's a uh, quartz uh, clock in here, uh, timing it out. And then at the end of 30 seconds, it's going to energize the coil. And you can hear the coil buzzing away. And presumably, if you've got this thing plumbed properly, water is going to flow through uh, the solenoid valve and into the boiler. Now, since we've set it at one gallon per cycle, uh, what that means is it's just simply going to, the solenoid is going to stay open for a set period of time, which sort of is more or less equivalent to one gallon, more or less. And eventually this is going to go from zero to one. Yeah, there's one and it's pretty soon it's going to stop. All right. So now it's going to wait another 30 seconds because we're still uh, simulating a call for, for water. And the other way to uh, trigger it is by um, pushing this uh, feed button here. I'm not going to interrupt the circuit to do that. The purpose of the delay is to make certain that the um, boiler is waiting long enough for all the water from the system to return. If it simply energized immediately on a call for water, what could possibly happen is that once the boiler shuts down, water that's held up in the system could be coming back and flood the boiler. So the idea of this delay is to allow the water, or give the water a chance to return back to mama before it uh, you add any more water. Generally, 30 seconds is enough. Sometimes you may have to, on larger systems, you may have to use a two minutes or if you have a partially clogged return or something. If you need any more than two minutes um, and you're still experiencing flooding and you have to uh, climb up the scale to uh, greater numbers than this, then you've uh, got some work ahead of you to find out why that's happening. All right, this is reading two, and pretty soon it's going to stop feeding. All right, there's still a call for water, but now it is in lockout. What this means is that it's no longer going to feed any more water. It is fed what it thinks are approximately two gallons of water, and there's no, it still hasn't added enough to um, uh, satisfy the low water cutoff. And so it's now in lockout. So in general, what will, what should happen then is that there, the, uh, the boiler should no longer be firing. The system's going to go cold and somebody's going to go down and, and look at this thing. If they see LOC, that uh, essentially means for some reason either this is not passing water, somebody has left the um, uh, shutoff valve in the closed position and it's not feeding water into the boiler. In order to um, do that, you either de-energize the system or you um, so that clears the fault, as it were. That clears the lockout. And now you see the number two, just like you saw originally when the, um, the unit has uh, been uh, when you first energize the unit new out of the box.
The other way to feed water electrically is to uh, push down on this feed switch here. The nice thing about that rocker switch is that once you release the pressure, um, it stops feeding. And the um, other issue is that the time that you're holding down the feed switch is also being tracked um, by the uh, processor chip. If I hold that down long enough, um, the unit will uh, tick over to three. Now, in order to set these dip switches, uh, usually you need like a point of a knife or a little tiny screwdriver. And you set them like so. Kind of reach in underneath the one where it's set and lift it up. And if you don't reset it properly, it's going to read, it says error. So you can set it to say trip at uh, low water cutoff. And you can set the delay anywhere from 30 seconds to, to uh, 10 minutes. But you got to make sure you now if you try to use, if you try to depress two switches at the same time, it'll read error. Or if you don't have anything set, it will read error. So we've got it set at uh, 30 seconds and low order cutoff. We'll go ahead and simulate a call for water. There's our little period indicating that the uh, machine is getting a call and it's timing down. And Essentially what this is doing, it's sending a signal to this chip here, which is an optocoupler. It's actually causing a um, LED light inside of here to uh, saturate a um, uh, transistor uh, semiconductor uh, current. And what that does is that allows the 24 volts to be decoupled from the five volts that um, this microchip needs. So what it'll do is it'll feed and continue to feed until uh, the low water cutoff is satisfied. Now normally, and that will maintain a minimum safe level uh, for the boiler. But I would not recommend that the boiler, uh, that this control be set to uh, trigger at low water cutoff, because here's what could happen. The low water cutoff uh, may not be working properly and it may not sense the proper level. So what could be happening is now the boiler is filling and filling and filling. The low water cutoff is malfunctioning and continuing to call for water when in fact the boiler is now flooding and you've got water squirting out of um, radiator vents all over your, your, um, your building. As you can see it's, I remember we started at 2, we're now at 3, um, and it'll go to 4 and it'll keep on feeding until we withdraw the, um, the signal. Yeah, that's four, and so forth and so on. So this is not an advisable setting. Now, which one should you set it at? Let's see, let's go to five, and then we'll let it uh, let it go here. Yeah. and so on and so forth. So we withdraw the signal and the unit should shut down. 
All right, so what of these numbers do you want to set it at? Well, what I would do is your best guess at first. So let's say you set it at two gallons. So it receives a signal. Your delay is safe set at 30 seconds, um, perhaps as long as two minutes, and then it triggers and it begins to feed. Now this is where you need to observe. So you um, set your boiler to where the low water cutoff is triggered or just below that point. Then have this unit trigger and watch the boiler refill. If the refill comes to significantly less than half full, half the sight glass filled, then change your setting accordingly. You know, you might have to go up to, on larger boilers, you might have to go up to three gallons or, or, or four gallons. Sometimes these things feed very slowly. Remember, it's only giving you a timeout and not actually measuring actually how much water is really passing through the valve. It's only holding it open for a set period of time. So you have to experiment as to which one of these settings will fill the boiler about mid-gauge and then shut off per trigger. So if you set it at four gallons, what will happen at the end of 30, a delay of 30 seconds will be that as soon as the low water cutoff triggers it and the period shows up, after 30 seconds, it will feed this many units, so-called, or I'm going to call it a VXT unit or approximately a gallon, and will not stop until this says plus four or whatever is on this, um, this readout here. And you can see, um, you take away the power, re-energize it, the number is, is there until you push the reset button and go to zero. So this is the 120 volt unit, and this also can be powered up the same way, although it's a lot more sensitive to um, uh, polarization. So here, you wanna make sure this is neutral and this is the hot lead here. We got 120 volts here, so you got to be a little bit more careful about handling stuff. You got a ground here. I'm not going to trigger it. And you'll see something. This is something that I got uh, off an old boiler. And we turn it up. And um, we have a rather high number that pretty much tells you why the boiler is dead. Not only do I have 535 displayed on this unit, but it's flashing. Flashing means that it went up to 999 times and that's coming around again. So that's 1500, over 1500 gallons, presumably, uh, went through that boiler before it finally probably rotted out. And, and corroded. So it was literally flashing danger at you, literally flashing that the, the system was in, in pain. And um, unfortunately, it was ignored by the owner. And uh, they probably had to either get a, a new boiler or some form of alternate heat before the had to replace. So this uh, flashing unit tells a tale. Kind of sad in a way. So anyway, that is the Hydro Level VXT, and uh, hopefully in another video we'll get into um, the workings of the uh, solenoid valve itself, and maybe even, as I learn a little bit more about this uh, electronic circuit, learn uh, uh, maybe describe some of these, uh, these components. But um, please, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask, and uh, have a great day.